today um, about SRS, about the surgery. And not the surgery as a medical fact, not as a requirement um, in transition, um, and not even the particulars about it. There's a lot of accounts out there that are well worth reading. I really want to talk about SRS as a spiritual event, as a moment really of, of rebirth and renewal, as a moment of magic. And, and in the process, recount a little my own experience. I had my surgery with Shrang out in um, Wisconsin. I remember making the pilgrimage there. At the time, it felt very much like a pilgrimage. And, um, and I was scheduled for surgery first thing Tuesday morning and Monday night, you know, I, is in the hospital room. And the first thing they have you do is they you drink this gallon of just, trust me, god awful tasting liquid. And so you, you drink the gallon and that flushes out your system. But already I was taking it on in a spiritual dimension, really seeing it not as a physical cleansing, but just trying to concentrate, to empty out everything, to create an emptiness within my being, a space that was silent and calm. And I was extremely calm. The decision for surgery was the easiest decision of all in the transition. Many more moments, much more difficult, than the surgery. For me, that was the easiest of uh, choices to make. I knew from the beginning um, that I wanted that. And so that wasn't, that was of no concern. I wasn't nervous about that. Um, some people get nervous about, you know, regrets, but that, that never occurred to me. Anyway, so I was completely calm and empty, and I, and I went to sleep. I remember waking up, they wake you up and they prep you. And um, you're placed on a gurney. And then I was in the elevator and the elevator went down. And, you know, and even that just felt like this process of going down, for me at the time, into the earth, down below, down. And you come out into the surgery rooms. Um, and I spoke with anesthesiologists and they brought me into the operating room, and it's very cold. And they keep it cold to keep it sterile, and I remember being chilled, and, and you know, the blood's drained out of you and from the cold, and, and um, you know, and it felt like preparing to die, exactly like preparing to die, as if, It's too hard to explain, but I knew that in a few moments my life would change. And I remember them putting on a mask, you know, the anesthesia. And at that moment it was like everything was quiet. I don't remember anything of sound. There must have been sound. But when I think back, it's like a silent movie, and um, and it's like a silent movie where you're just about to jump off a cliff, just about to fall, and it goes blank. And I went, everything went dark. And then the next moment, I woke up in my in my room, and I remember looking up, and my current fiance, my boyfriend at the time, Alan, was there, and. Um, I remember squeezing his hand and him saying, everything went well, everything went well. And there was a couple of bouquet of flowers, one for my brother and one for my mom. And I drifted back into sleep and, you know, you're on this morphine drip and, and everything's unreal, you sort of float in and out. It's very dream, dreamy. 
and disoriented. And every surgeon has their own process, but Strang's was interesting for me. For six days and six nights, you're kept immobile. You lay completely flat in the bed, without moving, never turning on your sides, just flat. And for six days and six nights, your body's taken care of. And attendants come and they sponge down your skin. They put cream on your face. You know, and they massage you and feed you and all the waste is taken away. And it's very much like you're a child again. You're very much a baby again. But you're also an adult experiencing being a child again. And so it's a very, very interesting unusual space to be in. And it was significant to me that it was six days and six nights, you know, and you made your way through that. And on the seventh day, unbelievably, you know, the seventh day, which has so much meaning for me. So on the seventh day, they get you up and they have you sit up very, very gently, very carefully. And, and they bring your feet and they place your feet on the floor again gently and slowly and and your legs are weak because you haven't used them and, and, they, and they try to have you stand up and your, your knees buckle a little and have to support your weight. And, um, and I remember that and being unsteady and very tentatively trying to walk as if you're trying to, again, learn to walk for the first time. And they led me out of the room and to a very small shower stall that wasn't far off and there was a chair in there and I, I sat down and um, and they prepared the water and they made it sure it was warm and um, there was soap and shampoo and even though you know my body had been sponge bath I hadn't washed in a week and um, I remember the water coming down and filling it on my body you know, and feeling it going over my breasts and feel it washing down across my new sex. And I remember the border. It was the most incredible sensual moment. And I remember looking up at the water and it hitting my face and, and running down my hair. And all the energy of that moment just draining out of your body. Everything. And you're just, you're empty. Again, you're empty, and all of that is washed away. And you feel reborn, and it feels like miracle, and it feels like magic, and it's, it's the most stunning, for me it was the most stunning emotions I had had ever, ever in my life. And I just remember thinking, oh my life, this is real, oh my God. This is real. This is real. And they led you back, me back very slowly back to bed. And very slowly you get into bed and carefully you lay down. You put your head back on the pillow. And the sheets drop back over you. Oh, and you just drift into sleep. And it was the sweetest sleep. I can't tell you how important that process was for me. That sense of being born, that sense of spiritual awakening was very real. It was as real as anyone else's religious moment. And for me, it was almost a religious moment. Anyway, I wanted to share it with you.